Hey, this is Sherry here from SincerelyJean.com, and today we are going to go over the Yoast SEO plugin. And um, this is just a blank website we use for tutorials. Our main website is SincerelyJean.com. All right, so we're in the WordPress dashboard, and on the left sidebar, you're going to hover over plugins. And then for ones that you've already installed, you can click Installed Plugins, but for adding new ones, go ahead and click Add New. All right, so you can look at the featured, popular, recommended plugins, or you can search over here. You can search using keyword, author, or tag. I'm just going to use a keyword, Yoast SEO. Oops. Oh. Okay. All right, here it is. And just so you know, for plugins, you can see how many have been installed. You can see the rating. So this one has over a million active installs and uh, four and a half stars. So you know this um, plugin is highly rated. A lot of people have liked it. Um, you can see the author right here. And uh, if you want more details, you can click more details here to get more information about that particular plugin. If you are ready to install your plugin, go ahead and click install now. Go ahead and click activate. Okay. And now you should see that plugin over here on the left hand sidebar. Click on SEO dashboard. Okay, you can actually do a step-by-step -step process to configure this plugin. So I'm, it should be under your notifications and so to, to configure it. So go ahead and click here. Okay, and then it's just, we're literally going to walk you through step-by-step -step on how to set this up. Um, this is just a sign up for the Yoast newsletter. Um, you don't have to do that. Go ahead and click next. Environment. Please specify the environment in which this site is running. Um, so this is going to be, you know, production, staging, or development. Um, so in most cases, it's going to be a production website. A site type, blog, workshop, news website, small business, other corporation, other personal site. Um, I'm just going to pick blog for now. Okay, and then um, basically they just need to know if this is a company or a person running it. Uh, I'm just going to click person right now and my name. Next. All right, this is really great. Uh, Yoast will allow you to automatically upload, um, well not automatically, but upload all of your social media profiles right here. And um, it, like it says up here, we use these to let search engines know about them, enhance your social metada metadata. So that's a really great um, thing about Yoast SEO. Post type visibility. Um, let's see, post type posts should be visible, post type pages visible, uh, post type media should be visible. Um, I am fine with my media being visible. Are there multiple authors on this site? Yes or no? Google Search Console. Um, this is a great asset to help you with your search engine optimization. Uh, I'm not going to show how to set this up in this tutorial, but you can click here and um, set up your search console. Title settings, I'm fine with the little dash right there. Okay, and that's it. It's all set up, so easy peasy. And let me show you what it looks like in a blog post. Okay, here's a blog post that I've already finished. As you can see, I've already added the title 
and all of my media and text. And so then we're going to scroll to the bottom and look at our Yoast SEO plugins. This is where you're going to find it at the bottom of each individual blog post. All right, so right here, readability, that just means how easy it is for someone to look through your blog posts and how easy it is for them to read it. I'm mostly concerned about the keyword and my ranking on Google. So basically it's gonna give you either a red, orange, or green light, and you want the green light. Because that means that you have your post is optimal for optimized for search engines um, and you're going to rank higher. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is figure out what is going to be your focus keyword. This is the most important thing. I have a tutorial on how to use the Google keyword tool. I show you exactly how to find uh, focus keywords that have the lowest competition and highest average monthly searches on Google. So make sure you check that out. I already did a search for, for my topic, tomato soup. Um, and I know that this focus keyword phrase has low, like I said, low competition and high monthly searches. All right. So now that I have my focus keyword. Now you need to go up here to edit snippet. So make sure you click that and you need to put um, your own meta description. Make sure it has, Again, your focus keyword, and make sure it has other keywords that people would be searching for in Google and um, a quick description of your, your blog post. There is a limit, so see if I keep writing, see it's gonna go orange because that's too long. Okay, so it'll, it'll show you about how long it needs to be. All right, also it'll tell you if it's too short. Also, um, in your title, make sure that your title has that focus keyword also. Next thing. Go ahead and scroll down to analysis. If you do not have a green light, this will show you exactly how what you need to do in order to get to that green light and to have um, and to optimize your blog post for search engine results. All right, so scroll back up a little bit. Now go to social. This is a really cool feature on Facebook and Twitter. If someone shares directly from this blog post, you can. You can already insert the exact title, description, and image that you want it to automatically have so it shares directly from your blog post. It also tells you the images. Same with Twitter. Okay, so that's a cool feature. Um, advanced settings. So Meta Robots Index, this is basically saying if you want the Google search, like the search engine robots to be able to search your blog post. And of course, you you know definitely want them to be able to search it if you want traffic to your website. The default is index, and so for some if for some reason you do not want anything crawling, uh, go ahead and click non-index. And for Meta Robots Follow, this refers to the links that you have in your blog post. If you have any links linking to another website, and basically you tell the robots if you want them to follow those links or not follow. In most cases, you're gonna want them to follow, but there are cases where you're gonna want no follow links. Okay, those are some of the key functions of the Yoast SEO. It, in my opinion, it is a must-have plugin for your website, and I hope that this tutorial helped.